This is a jug of limonene. Limonene? I found that over the course of purchasing limonene, in, they come in different cans. They seem to come at different ages. Mm -hmm. And I found some come with the off-color yellow and are already beginning to show signs of um, what we're going to go in and talk about. But um, every non-polar has mystery oil. It doesn't matter. It's not about gas. It's about the objects that surround it. And at the end of the day, this will be my weak spot in my entire equation. The limonene will take this out. That's why I want this out of the can as soon as possible, or else I have more work to do. Sure, makes sense. So let's go into... So just to give them a quick little briefing too, that bottle is about 95% uh, D-limonene, hmm. and then 5%, which he would call the mystery, which is... Uh, Citrus Everything, oils. it can be citrus oil, it can be plastic gasket, mm -hmm. it can be all the contaminants that are not, that are damaged, just, mm -hmm. these are terms. So it could be damaged, it could be just as much mm -hmm. damaged limonene that's yeah. converted over. So sure. um, now we go into why, let's say, everyone doesn't just run out and pr try to produce an inhalable product. When we're talking about food grade, we're talking about tested for ingestion. With what I've been developing over course of a very long two years mm -hmm. is what I consider the not limonene. He got this 5% out of here, which is clearly not clear, and then got back to clear. Let's uh, move on to the next section. We'll explain kind of how you get limonene and how the generic principles of how to get it out. I grabbed a little green material so that we could do a little basic Extraction, the kind of situation you're going to get yourself into in your kitchen or, I don't know, this is the uh, old school way. Um, you pretty much end up at the bong shop um, looking for a butane tube, but instead of using it mouth open with uh, the butane going in through the top, you'll be turning it upside down and introducing it. And not using butane at all. Pretty much. And um, not using pressurized gas, we'll be using vacuum. So we're just going to pack a basic tube with... Um, the kind of material that um, if you're a caregiver, if you're someone helping someone who's sick, you're not going to be getting um, the nugs, the nugs, the nugs. This is going to be what most people in a, the bad situation want to try this, right. who are sick of the only option being isopropanol alcohol, which is completely non-considerable. Mm -hmm. Like if that's what happens when you finally go, I can't get any help, uh, is reach for isopropanol alcohol, it's not going to do it. So I'm literally not going to put uh, a lot of heart and effort into the packing. We're just going to... Pack it up. Grind it's definitely it. nice dry material. Now, is that something that you look for when you're doing a, an it's, extraction? In the case of where polarity, uh, if this was alcohol, absolutely, because the water relationship is going to totally go for that. In the case of limonene, no. Um, I've done it live. Um, your removal of water is something that your skill in the road of vape is where it's going to come down to. It's not really going to come down to um, the starting material. But what it will affect is how the limonene travels over the surface mm -hmm. and how much limonene you use, how much you get back, and how much you can pre-grind. If this right. was sticky, gooey nonsense, what I would be, the two would actually be packed in balance. You would have air spots where the limonene would just go to the left, mm -hmm. where when it's broken down, you get something more realistic. So I'm just going to hit it with one of my old favorite tools. I forgot it did that with the weed when you don't uh, fill it all the way. Close it up a little. That's awesome. <laughs> Just packed. That's packed. Yeah. So there, you got a, you got your load. It's keeping all over from below. Yeah, it sure is. All right. So we're out of here with one more tap. One more little blow. Well, that's how you pack a tube. Life, little, in the, life in the lab. Yeah, a little rubber to make it uh, gentle. We're just going to apply a little vacuum assist. Um, we'll just point to it where the energy is pulling. Yeah. Purified D limonene. Yes, sir. Would you like to do the honors of the solvent extraction? Well, sure. Man-made oil, what folks! I, would I pour it all through? I think that's enough for that level of trim. 
Um, you haven't broken down to just having done quite a quite a few runs that you know how much you would pour through per tube? Or? Well, I mean, when I'm going into my, you know, you could say the home sport edition, that process would have been done at smaller intervals to create a stack of extremely packed material. Sure. So the limiting would travel through a lot slower, but right. um, this being a nice loose pack, you get a quick... Um, hey, you really do. It was like a quick wash. Boom. Yeah. It's going through a little slower now that I... Yeah, so now you kind of... First two times. If you want to bring the camera close in for folks, um, sure. they can see that drip down. So now actually as you can, you kind of get a sense of um, the pressure's building now. So now it's not flowing through as quickly because um, the plant materials become saturated. So it's actually starting to swell and become a slightly slower extraction. So that might go for 20, 25 minutes, depending on that rate of pull. So as you can even see, just me letting go of the vacuum and pulling it again, the light amount of water in the main flask vaporizes up and down. Oh yeah, try that again. So if you're ever wondering, am I even getting vacuum, that is your... Great way to tell. Great way to tell. Quick interaction. And um, now this is like, okay, I want every drop. That is kind of why we brought it into, uh, it first went through quick, it saturates, and then this would be a slow extraction. In the case of um, something a little bit more industrial, like an extraction method with one of these, don't have all the parts nearby, but um, the tube would be of a different diameter and um, we'd be using vacuum and pressure in at the top. So um, this funnel just becomes this funnel at the micro industrialization scale. Right. But um, everything matches and everything is toe to toe. So um, in the future with faster purge times and safer setups like this, we can introduce a different type of uh, extraction artist into the game. Mm. Um, it won't just be women on the hair straighteners making rosin, but um, every mother can participate in extraction like this that's safe. And uh, we can take a quick look in at what I would recommend be the next step for someone who's not in the rotovate category. Great. So we'll go to that. Okay, well, show us what we're doing now. We're back. So, we took out a little bit of isolate. Um, I noticed that in me and Mark's rush, I didn't actually filter it. So there's a little bit of plant material in this, but this is not the normal style. But, um, so you've got a little bit of a uh, gold squeeze. What um, I'm advising people at home to do, because you're going to be trying to get the limonene back to an oral ingestion level. Um, you won't be able to remove this at any level that makes it a smokable product. Um, even without that secondary limonene that uh, I've presented. But um, this is food grade limonene and it's qualified for food and it's non-toxic. So um, you would take in thin films, you just want to pour out the paperest of thin films, just enough to cover the surface. And then what we're going to be introducing it to is not vacuum distillation, and we're not even going to be adding water, but, um, and this is why it won't work in a vacuum, we're going to be using ionic breeze to actually evaporate the limonene the same way it will eventually leave the surface of the table. Um, this will allow you to get it down to something that is about 5% limonene. If you smoke it and try to have fun with your buddies, you're going to get a harsh experience, just like you've seen us all with our dabbing with these terps. But um, if you're looking to make an oral product, you would introduce that into the food dehydrator. And um, I would leave it to purge. And you would use as many layers as you need to to eliminate 
these in thin film runs. You should end up with that same paste of a sludge. It won't be red like this, but um, that nature. It's not pouring limonene, it's liquid. And um, what you'll be able to do from there, when that comes out the other end, is you'll be able to scrape it up. And uh, in a dish or your standard method, you can then introduce that into your coconut oil for your decarboxylation process if you don't want to just decarboxylate on its own. During that process, if you were to, let's say, you're really in a pinch, you could cook this down straight. You could just go straight through, bypass this, and just cook this down at its true boiling point of 177 Celsius, and you would be decarboxylating it at the same time. I don't like those temperatures, meaning it's still flammable. Um, so I don't prefer to heat it, and I don't want to alter it in any unknown way until the majority of it's removed because it's the cannabinoids I want to decarboxylate, not cook limonene in front of them. So I still prefer that everyone find your local food dehydrator. If you have a cylindrical one, you may have to bust out a rack in order to give yourself room. I like the temperature 41. That's what I set it at. Anything past the flash point is a potential auto ignition temperature. So your home is going to be filled with limonene vapor. It's going to suffuse your environment. I don't want any heating element that kicks on to start this up to it even lightly far towards your limonene. So set it at 41 Celsius, 105 Fahrenheit, um, and leave that for 24 to 48 hours depending on how thin of a film. As soon as you get a product that uh, exhibits no tilt, you can move into the phase of um, heating that for your final process. So whether you want to go crude and put this all on a stove and dangerously heat it, um, which I don't agree. I prefer this method and I prefer many shelves because you only need a very thin amount to operate for any one day. This is not an industrial process. Now when it comes to extracting for sport, um, the sport of extracting, the temperature of extracting, the pressure of extracting, that is a completely different subject than um, one of high competition like any other um, field of endeavor where men get testosterone at the last second of. 